the Moto Z2 Force, a phone that got mixed reviews globally, has now months later been launched in India with a fresh new price tag. Should you even care? Well, I've been using this phone as my primary for almost a week and I really think you... You know what? No spoilers. We'll get to that in a bit. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case your memory ain't as shadow proof as you'd like it to be and can't remember, my name's Ash, you're watching C4D Tech. And if you've not checked out our latest giveaway, here's a card along with a link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like and turn on notifications. Let's now get to our review of the Moto Z2 Force. The Z2 Force looks great, you get no argument there. It's sleek given that it's only 6.1mm thick. It's light since it weighs a measly 143 grams. The metal unibody belt with the antenna lines running around the edges give it a nice accent trim, making it look premium. The metal sides curve a little and overall it feels quite nice on hand. That said, it's not without its cons. We have no headphone jack, no 18 by 9 panel and the battery capacity… we'll get to it. Now, the biggest pro though is that display. Moto's using their shatter shield technology here. So we have an AMOLED panel with multiple layers above it. You can drop it to your heart's content and get away with just a few minor dings and scratches. Now, what happens to be the Z2 Force's biggest pro also happens to be a con. To ensure that the screen doesn't shatter, Motorola's had to go with plastic. Now, there's a reason why all brands still use glass instead of plastic. And the reason is the fact that plastic tends to pick up scratches really fast. Now, I consider myself one of the safest when it comes to handling phones. I rarely drop them. I'm super cautious about what's in my pocket to the point of obsession. Like every time I put a phone in, I'm like, okay, there's nothing else. There's just my earphones. Hell, I even wrap it in something when I drop it into a bag. And even for someone like me, with just a week of use, you can see some minor scratches starting to show. Now imagine what would happen if you weren't as careful as I and had to use it for well over a week, you know, for a year or two. You'd definitely have to end up putting tempered glass on it, right? But if you were too careless like a certain someone I know, you'd definitely appreciate the shadowproofness of this panel. Now, looking past the plastic, the AMOLED display here is great. It's a tad warm, but it's crisp and sharp. The viewing angles are stellar. It's also bright enough for easy viewing outdoors. It's got a Quad HD resolution, which spread over 5.5 inches, results in a pixel density well over 500 pixels per inch. Also note that this phone is daydream ready, so if you're into VR, 360 degree video and that sort of thing, you're gonna really appreciate all these pixels. That said, the last few months have been all about 18x9 panels. And I was told by Moto that they haven't been able to implement the shatter shield technology on 18x9 panels. So it was either go 16x9 with shatter shield or 18x9 without shatter shield. We all know what they went with, but what would you have gone with? What's your preference? Here's a poll, let me know. Now while this omission might be understandable, what is inexplicable is the decision to omit the headphone jack. Even more so given the cheaper and thinner Z2 Play had it. The audio via the included adapter is just mediocre, but audio via the earpiece that doubles as a single speaker was refreshingly loud. It is one of the best implementations we've come across in recent times. Talking about that earpiece, call quality and cellular reception were both great. Now enough for the externals, let's take a look inside. Given the Z2 Force is a Moto flagship, it's got flagship grade internals with a Snapdragon 835, 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage. Now this is coupled with Motorola's almost stock Android UI, so no matter what you do, it's all fast and snappy. The Z2 Force was an absolute pleasure to use. Fast uploading, check. Smooth transitions, check. RAM management, check. Extra features, check. Moto's checked all the right boxes with regards to user experience. The Z2 Force runs on an almost stock build of Android Oreo with a few extra features. These features include favorites like chop to turn on the flashlight, twist to open camera. Touchless controls also greatly improve the user experience. Right from the active display that can be triggered by a wave to be able to activate Google Assistant with a screen off, it's been a very pleasurable experience. Moto Voice also lets you launch apps with the show me command. I found myself using this a lot. The implementation is not perfect, but it worked more often than it didn't. So overall, the user experience is one area that Moto has nailed. Now let's move on to one controversial aspect of this phone, the battery. When I initially got this phone, I was both disappointed 
at the same time interested in the battery. I still am disappointed and interested, but my reasons have entirely changed. Now my first impression was, well it's got just a 2700 mAh battery, that's disappointing. But it's got a 3500 mAh turbo power mod and that makes it super interesting. But now after using it for a week, I figured out that the 2700 mAh battery didn't disappoint me as much as I thought it would. Now think about it for a minute, a phone with similar internals and a 3300 mAh battery, you know, that gets me to the end of a day of moderate usage with about 30-35% juice left. Uh, the 20% reduction in battery capacity meant the Zito Force got me to the end of a similar day with 10-15% to juice left. Now I do not like going below 15%, well, no one does, but the Zito Force made me go there almost every day, but it did get me to the end of my day. Now what was a little disappointing here was that 3500 mAh turbo power mod. Lenovo Moto's presentation even said 6200 mAh battery combining the 2700 internal with the 3500 mod capacities and that's a tad misleading because what was overlooked here is the loss of efficiency while charging. The mod while rated at 3500 mAh realistically adds only about 2400 mAh to the phone. In my tests I found it capable of charging the Z2 Force from 0 to 90 before dying out. While I felt disappointed about the mislead it was still good. I didn't even plug in my phone once in my entire week. It was always go to work, carry a super light and slim phone, come back home, throw the mod on it, watch TV, have dinner. Given that the mod supports turbo charging too, the phone's back to 100%, now plug the mod back in to charge, go to bed with a fully charged phone. That's been my days. The TLDR version if you found it too long. Do not worry about the battery life on this one. It usually lasts through a day. If it doesn't, just throw the mod on it and it will last no matter how hard you push it. Talking about mods, it's been over a year since Moto introduced them, so there's quite a wide variety of mods available in the market. Whether you want to spend a lot of money on a projector or speaker that works only with Moto Z phones. Now that is an entirely different question. I really can't answer that for you, but if you want to get it, it's available. And now on that note, let's talk price. Oh wait, aren't we missing something? The cameras, the Z2 Force has dual 12 megapixel sensors to the back. It's a monochrome plus RGB setup with both 1 by 2.9 inch sensors with 1.25 micron sized pixels. The Z2 Force handles well when the lighting conditions are good. It captures images that have a lot of detail. The colors and dynamic range are on point. Sadly, there is a bit of shutter lag, but it's manageable at most times. Where it really irked me was when shooting under low light. Thanks to the second monochrome sensor, it still managed to shoot some nice images. Of course, there was some noise and the performance here wasn't as good as on say a Pixel 2 or an iPhone 10, which definitely are priced higher. So taking price into account, the performance here was quite good, even under low light. By the way, we've got a depth enabled mode included here, basically portrait mode for the Z2 Force. The implementation was not great, there are blemishes here and there, and we've seen it done better in the past. Additionally, there is also an option to shoot images with the monochrome sensor only. I don't do a lot of black and white photography myself, but if that's your cup of tea, it's there and it works as well as advertised. Now moving on to video, the Z2 Force can shoot 4K videos at 30 frames per second. Thanks to EIS, even at 4K, the footage is quite stable. The quality is quite good too, with ample detail, vivid colors and excellent dynamic range. As far as selfies go, the 5 megapixel camera doesn't shoot the sharpest selfies we've come across, but Moto's done a fair job here. The dual tone dual LED flash really helps under super dark conditions. And now we get to the price. The Z2 Force, when it launched globally, was priced around $800, that's over 50,000 Indian rupees for just the 432 variant, meaning it competed with the S8s and the iPhones. But now, months later, Moto's brought it to India at a much cheaper price. 35,000 rupees and at this point it finds itself competing with the likes of the OnePlus 5T, Honor View 10, the Mi Mix 2. Now given that Moto's throwing in a turbo power mod with every purchase, it makes the Z2 Force, despite its cons, excellent value for money. Just remember the bet about the scratches, the cameras and Moto's up update track record and if you're okay with all that then you should definitely pick this one up. It's great bang for your buck.
So there you have it, my take on the Z24s. Do you agree with what I've had to say in this video? Do you have an alternate point of view? Tell me all about it in the comments below. If you know anyone, friends or family who might be interested in the Z24s or in phones in this segment, please do share this video with them. And you know what to do. If you hated it, if you liked it, subscribe, turn on notifications. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this here is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.